All right, guys, we're going to be installing a West Texas off-road, a.k.a. Redneck Ram Hydro Assist Kit. Uh, in the box they've sent us is we have got a rebuilt steering box that has already been tapped uh, for our hydraulic lines. This looks like it is going to be the hydraulic cylinder. That would be correct there. They give us lines. And we've got a box that looks like some probably weld on mounts. Got a bag there in our box. We've got some weld on mounts. What we're going to do is actually be utilizing two of these on a steel diff cover uh, is how I normally mount them on my TJs. So we'll use two of those. And the other thing I grabbed from Rough Stuff Specialties, this is one of their inch and a half diameter tube clamps. Um, it is pre-threaded for, I believe, a half inch bolt. Uh, what we're going to do is use this to clamp onto the Curie tie rod system. And I may end up fabbing just a double shear mount with this as well. Kind of see how it all fits once we get it on there. And last parts of the box is we've got the rod ends for the end of the steering uh, ram. And we've got some extra hose fittings. Some extra 90s it looks like. As well as bolts. So complete kit. Uh, the other thing I may add on, if I still have one laying around, is going to be a steering cooler. Um, I think that'll help, one, just get a little bit more capacity, and two, help keep that fluid a little uh, cooler as we're using the steering system. Got a couple of stickers there, and it looks like they've given us an uh, instruction sheet, which, of course, you can follow along our video here and get all of your instructions as well. All right, guys, the gist of our steering box is going to be held on by three bolts sitting here. I've also got the steering box skid plate that you may or may not have. That's also going to be held on with some existing bolts in the front end there. Um, and then outside of that, we've got the steering shaft. That if you can see right here is where it connects. We're going to get that disconnected, pull it out, and that'll be our steering box. We will remove the pitman arm. Uh, that way we can thread that onto our new one. You'll also notice right now I do not have any steering, let alone a front axle sitting underneath of the Jeep. Um, we're doing this at the same time I'm doing the re-gear and front suspension on there, uh, which is the reason you do not see that. So on your own Jeep, you still can do this with the axle in. So what I've done to help hold the steering wheel is actually just fed the seatbelt through the bottom uh, loop. That way it's still movable if I need to be able to access the, uh, move the pitman arm in any way or the steering shaft. But at the same time, I'm not going to completely spin it and disconnect the or break the clock spring. The other thing I've done just to make life easier is uh, went ahead and removed the windshield washer fluid as well as just pulled out the coolant reservoir just to give a little bit of uh, easier access down to that steering shaft. It's a total of, uh, I think it was three bolts on the uh, washer fluid reservoir and made it simple enough to go ahead and do that. And we've got a 5 8 bolt down here. And that one I'm going to remove first just so I can get our steering box out. If you do not have a steering box, uh, skid plate, then your bolt will just be sitting in uh, in the bracket that you see there. Next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and get the steering shaft undone by loosening the bolt there and sliding that shaft out.
two hoses coming off. Uh, we've got our return hose and this is going to be our high pressure hose. We're going to get those undone and then uh, again we'll get that steering uh, shaft pulled out and get it all back together in a second. So we've got the steering box pulled out and sitting in our vise. We're going to go ahead and pull that pitman arm off. All right, so for your pitman arm puller, it's going to be a specialty tool. Slides right behind the pitman arm here. Got our pitman arm puller engaged there. You'll see a cutout that you can use a wrench. I usually use a socket on my wrench. Once we got her heated up, we were able to get it off. It is super hot right now, so I'm gonna grab a rag. All right, so we've got our new steering box ready to go in. First thing we're gonna need to do is get some steering lines hooked up. All right, so we've got our steering lines semi hooked up. What we're gonna do now is get our box lined up, if we can. All right, we've got all of our steering lines tight. Go ahead and get that steering column bolt back in. And last piece on the steering box for now is going to be our pitman arm. Don't forget your lock washer. We can get that nut threaded on. So the hydraulic ram from West, West Texas Off-Road Redneck Ram does come in a raw finish. All I'm doing is putting some, uh, some spray paint over top of it. All I did was tape off fittings, threads, uh, on the top and the bottom. We're mounting the West Texas Off-Road Steering Ram. We've got the Curry Correct Link Steering Kit on this TJ. And one of the big problems I'm running into is clearance. Uh, originally, we purchased the steel plate diff cover. We were going to mount the tabs actually off the diff cover itself, and then from there, weld on tabs or clamp on a tab onto the tie rod assembly. 
Uh, the issue we ran in with that is we just don't have enough room uh, between our track bar, our drag link, and then just room in between for the, uh, the suspension to compress. Uh, I, I didn't feel I had enough room to mount the ramp unless we went underneath. And then for that, I'm gonna give up ground clearance, which is what I did not want to do. Uh, so what I've decided to do is I'll paint over, and this is gonna be our stock steering stabilizer mount. Um, I've gone ahead and made a sleeve that way, it is a 5 8 outer diameter to fit inside of the uh, ram mount, and then a half inch bolt can go through. And I've also uh, kind of made a bracket that way that uh, steering ram doesn't move back and forth inside. It's kind of positioned into the one fixed location. Um, so now we've got uh, where we're going to probably end up mounting our steering tabs, just trying to figure out final locations for those. Um, one thing I don't know if you can see in our picture I'll compress this frame down a little bit but we have just enough room for a piece of paper between our diff cover and our tie rod um, so not a lot of room there I do have a All right, so we've got our hoses now rooted over to our ram. Ram's been mounted in its permanent location. Uh, tie rod is welded, painted, everything is together there. What I did want to take a minute and show everyone is kind of hose rooting. Uh, this is the, I believe it's 03 to 06 steering box. Um, so what we have is the hose that is towards the front. If you follow that, that is rooted to the front side of my ram here um, and then the hose that is towards the rear the configuration I have is rooted towards the rear of my ram um, keep this in mind when you are setting up your steering if you set it up opposite if you swap your hoses around then you can run into the issue of um, now while you're trying to steer with the gearbox it's pushing fluid the opposite way and won't allow it to steer and now I'm just gonna go over procedures to get the system blood out. What I've done is our power steering box or power steering pump and reservoir, I've gone ahead and got that filled. Uh, this is a lot easier if you have a friend. I do most of my work myself. So this is how I do it. Uh, again, just making sure everything is topped off. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more here. And from an elevated position, it makes it a little bit easier, but I'm just gonna spin the wheels back and forth and I can watch the fluid rise and fall, air bubbles come through. And uh, you're just gonna do this till you're not seeing any air bubbles and fluid pretty much remains at a, a steady state. As fluid drops down, you're gonna wanna stop and add more fluid, or if you have that friend with you, have him add fluid. Working on this system, we've got it pretty much completely drained. So I've got about a quart in there so far. This is just an update after the uh, first outing with the Redneck Ram. Went ahead and changed the mount. Uh, so before I had it mounted on the tie rod, uh, what I ended up doing is I was getting some binding just because of how low travel I was sitting between the uh, drag link and the track bar. Um, my mount was starting to, uh, to hit there when I had it on my tie rod. So what I've done is I've mounted it now off the drag link itself. Uh, so you can kind of see where I've gone through, made a mount that pivots up and over. That way I can still use my adjustment to get my alignment dialed in right. And then now if I come off to the side here, you can see I'm not going to have any sort of binding. This is about, this is at full droop. This is as close as I get um, to the tie rod. So I've got plenty of clearance now, worked out a lot better. So I just wanted to put an update here at the end of the video, just so everybody knows how that works.